Hello and welcome back to our spring webinar series. We are so excited to be joining you today to talk through some emergency preparedness tips that you can talk through with your student. As a reminder, I am your host, Allison Beasley, our coordinator of parent and family programs here at the university. We are so excited to be joined today by Shane Dorrell from our division of strategic communications. We are going to talk through some things that you can talk through with your students some tips for you to stay involved and to know what's going on. So without further ado, I'm going to throw it over to you, Shane. Okay, thank you, Allison. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy to be able to talk with you uh, about emergency preparedness at the University of Alabama. So I'm very passionate about this topic because like you, I am a UA parent. Uh, I have a daughter, she's a freshman, she's a poli-sci major. Uh, and uh, you know, I worry about her. I, I wanna know that she's safe when she's in her classes, uh, when she's getting coffee with friends, when she's eating in the dining hall, when she's hanging out in the residence halls. So, you know, like all parents, I worry too. Um, and while we as parents cannot control everything, that may happen to our children, we can help prepare them for when they encounter an emergency. So I hope today's presentation will give you some tools and some tips that you can share with your students and maybe some tools and tips for you as well uh, to help prepare them for what to do if an emergency happens on the campus. So today we're specifically gonna talk about severe weather in Alabama. We're also gonna touch on how the university notifies students in an emergency. We're gonna talk about how you as family members can get notified. Also, we're gonna talk about some emergency preparation and just some good tips on what your students can do to be prepared. And throughout this entire webinar, I'm gonna be referring you to ready.ua.edu. That's an excellent website. Uh, in fact, there's a screen capture there from the website. So when you have a moment, go to ready.ua.edu and you will find just a ton of resources that'll help you. So we know that many of you don't live in Alabama and you might live in parts of the country where you don't experience severe weather like we do. Um, and our most common threats in Alabama are severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. And at UA, we are constantly sharing with students what they should do in a severe weather emergency. In fact, the photo that you see here is from a safety reminder message that we send to students every month and three times a year, once in the fall, once in the spring, and once in the summer, we share a safety reminder about what to do in the case of severe weather. So you may want to tell your students, hey, Pay attention to those safety reminders that come out every month. Well, severe weather in Alabama can occur in any month of the year, but we're kind of unique. Uh, we're in a part of the country that actually has two distinct severe weather seasons. Our first is in the spring, which is March through May. So we're about to get into that. Uh, but we also have a severe weather season in the fall which is November through December. But as you can see by this chart, we can have tornadoes in any month. So from 1950 to 2018, you see that we had tornadoes in every month of the year. Of course, April being our biggest month. So what are tornadoes? Many of you probably know what a tornado is, but you may live in a part of the country that never experiences tornadoes. So tornadoes are violently rotating columns of air that come in contact with the ground. If they're not on the ground, they're just called funnel clouds. And tornado wind speeds can range from 65 miles per hour and up, and the highest on record was 318 miles per hour. Now the photo that you see there is from the EF4 tornado that hit Tuscaloosa on April 27, 2011. And that storm destroyed 12% of the city of Tuscaloosa in less than five minutes. Now, we were very fortunate on the campus because that storm did not hit campus, but it did claim the lives of six students and one staff member who lived off campus. And I can promise you 
that we at the university work very hard every day to make sure that a storm like that never claims another student's life. And we do that by educating our students about severe weather and by communicating with them when there is severe weather. So here's some tornado statistics from just this past year, 2019. We had 19 tornado days in 2019. And as you can see, we had 82 tornadoes in the state of Alabama. That resulted in more than 100 injuries and 23 fatalities. This map shows you the tornadoes that have happened in Alabama from 1950 to 2019 by county. And I have highlighted there in the blue box, Tuscaloosa County. And you'll see that we've had 76 reported tornadoes in Tuscaloosa County since 1950. And while most tornadoes happen in the afternoon and early evening, this chart shows you that tornadoes can happen at any time, day or night. So students need to stay weather aware. And if severe weather is forecast during the overnight hours, it's very important that they have a way to receive weather warnings in the middle of the night, either by making sure that their cell phone is charged and turned on and that the volume is turned up or that they have a NOAA weather radio that will alert them and wake them up if there is a storm. Well, we find that many of our students and many of our parents uh, don't understand the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning. And I saw this meme and I thought it was a great way to remember the difference. So in the Wizard of Oz, while Dorothy's still in Kansas, you know, the, the early part of the film, the black and white part of the film, uh, she has to watch out for her mean neighbor, Miss Gulch, because Miss Gulch is mad and she wants to take Toto away. So Dorothy's on the watch for when Miss Gulch shows up at their farm. But then when Dorothy goes to Oz, Miss Gulch turns into the Wicked Witch. And she says that famous line, I'll get you my pretty and that little dog of yours too. You all know that famous line. Well, that's what a tornado is like. It wants to get you. And so I think this is just a good way to know the difference between a watch. We've got to watch out for Miss Gulch, but when a warning comes, we've really got to be on our guard. Shane, I think that might be the best explanation that I've ever <laughs> seen anybody give. So parents, I'm going to give you the full authority to steal this and share with your student as well. This is such a great, number one, it's a great meme, but this is a really great cultural definition of the difference in a watch and a warning. Well, I just hope that our students are still watching the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so the difference, well, a tornado watch means conditions are favorable for the development of severe thunderstorms that can produce tornadoes in and close to the watch area. Now, normally tornado watches are large areas. They can cover many counties. They can cover an entire state. They can cover several states. And usually they're issued for up to six hours, but they can be extended. Tornado warnings means that a developing tornado has been detected either by radar or by reported by someone on the ground. And these are reliable sources who are making these reports to the National Weather Service, usually police officers, firefighters who've been trained to watch storms, also emergency management personnel. These are usually typically issued for just a portion of a county, and they usually last no more than 45 minutes. So here's what a tornado watch box would look like. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of counties that would be included in this tornado watch from back uh, just in February of 2020. So what happens when the National Weather Service issues a tornado watch? Well, when it includes Tuscaloosa County, which is where the university is, a UA alert will be sent through various channels. So students can expect to get a text message. Uh, they can also expect to see it on the UA Safety app, see it in UA Twitter. They'll see it on digital signage across campus. Uh, the tornado, uh, the indoor and outdoor PA system on campus will be activated 
Uh, it may pop up on a computer screen in a computer lab or at the library where they're studying. As soon as a tornado watch is issued and that UA alert is sent, our storm shelters are open for any student, faculty, and staff to go to. Our emergency operations center is activated, and that's a place where our law enforcement, uh, our emergency managers, uh, of course, I go as a member of Strategic Communications, and we all get together in one place so we can watch the weather in case uh, there's warnings that are issued or we need to communicate with the campus. And then something I do want to point out is when there's a tornado watch, classes remain in session. Now you may wonder, well, it's a watch, you know, it's, it's, the storm could get bad. Yes, you're right. But the vast majority of tornado watches never result in a tornado warning, or it may not result in a tornado warning in your area. So, can we uh, stop classes or cancel classes every time there's a watch? Uh, if we did that, we would not have enough seat time, which means our students would not be in class enough. So we, we have to weigh that. Um, if a student feels unsafe during a tornado watch, they should speak to their professor. And of course, our storm shelters are open and they can, of course, go to our storm shelters at any time. So here's a tornado warning. As you see, it's just a small section of, then this is Tuscaloosa County. You can see Tuscaloosa there on the map. Uh, this tornado warning was actually for the northern part of the county. So the National Weather Service draws a polygon for tornado warnings. Uh, and again, these polygons are usually small and they're very specific areas. And what this is telling you is that if you're in that polygon, if you're in that red space, you need to take immediate action. So if we are ever in a warning, the city of Tuscaloosa and the university campus is ever in a warning, our students need to take immediate action and they need to get to a safe place. Now, everyone outside that warning needs to remain alert and you know, be watching because at any time, another storm might pop up that would cause another warning. Uh, tornado warnings may cross county lines and there may be multiple warnings in a county at the same time. So what happens when there is a tornado warning? Well, when a tornado is detected on radar or a reliable source, the National Weather Service issues that warning. And when UA is in that, a UA alert is sent to all students, faculty and staff, it's posted on the UA Safety app and on the UA Twitter feed. Digital signage in our academic buildings and residence halls display the warning message, as well as phones in our campus offices, office computers, computers and computer labs, and libraries. Information about the tornado warning is broadcast on 92.5 FM, our UA information radio station. Our storm shelters remain open, and this is the time when students need to be moving to their nearest shelter if they haven't already done that. And the imme university immediately suspends normal operations, which includes any classes or labs that might be going, as well as any on-campus activities, such as performances, athletic events, or other events happening at that time. They are all suspended when we go under a tornado warning. Our Crimson Ride buses will drop students off at the closest building and encourage students to get inside because we don't want students in our buses if a tornado comes through campus. Once the warning expires or is canceled by the Weather Service, the university will resume normal operations and the buses will begin running again and classes will resume 30 minutes after a warning expires. So parents, here's my first tip to you. Make sure your child knows the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning. As Allison said, go ahead and share the meme. Secondly, make sure your child can locate Tuscaloosa County on a map of Alabama and knows the names of some of the adjacent counties. You know, we all rely too much on GPS these days to get us where we're going and we don't look at maps anymore. But that makes it very difficult to know when a severe storm system 
is headed our way. Now, most of this uh, weather that we receive comes from our west or our southwest. So it's a good idea for students to learn not only where Tuscaloosa County is, but as well as the names of the counties that are to our west, which are Pickens, Greene, Sumter, and Hale counties. So I hope you'll share the state of Alabama map with your student and encourage them to find out where Tuscaloosa County is. Well, where should you tell your student to go during a tornado watch or warning? You need to tell them that they need to go to either one of our storm shelters or one of our best available refuge areas, also known as a BARA, B-A-R-A. So here's a list of places that your students should go when a tornado watch happens, and especially when a tornado warning happens. The East Campus Storm Shelter, which is located near the Student Health Center, the Child Development Research Center, and the Capstone College of Nursing on the east side of our campus. The Storm Shelter in John H. England Junior Hall, and that's located in the basement of that residence hall. The North Campus Storm Shelter, it serves our students who live in and around Presidential Village. It's located on the lowest level of the Robert E. Witt Activity Center. Several classrooms inside North Lawn Hall, one of our academic buildings, were also built to storm shelter standards. The Capstone Parking Deck, which is our newest parking deck on campus, it's located near the Million Dollar Band Practice Field and across from the School of Law and the baseball stadium. And it has a best available refuge area on the lowest floor. And the Magnolia Parking Deck, located just off Bryant Drive, next to Sorority Row and the Corner Soup Store, has a best available refuge area on the lowest floor. Students who have pets can shelter with their pets in the Magnolia Parking Deck Barra. And I'm happy to report that when we get our brand new Tutwiler Residence Hall built and open uh, in a year or so, that it too will have a storm shelter. You and your students can find more information about our shelters at ready.ua.edu slash shelters. Well, what happens if your student can't get to one of the shelters or one of the parking decks that has the best available refuge area? Well, every campus building has been inspected and there are barrel locations identified for every building. Your student can find these locations by looking at the building emergency plan that's posted near the entrance and exit and elevators in each building. They can also find the best available refuge areas in the buildings by using the UA safety app or by going to ready.ua.edu slash shelters. So here's my next tip. When it's a sunny day and the weather's nice, ask your child to walk around campus and locate the nearest storm shelter to where they live and where their classes are. That way, when we do experience severe weather, they know exactly where to go. Now, if your son or daughter tells you, hey, I can't find any of the storm shelters, Tell them to download the UA Safety app and use the Explore feature to search for storm shelters. It will give them walking directions or driving directions to the nearest shelter. And they can also go to ready.ua.edu slash shelters to see where all the shelters are. Now let's talk a little bit about how your student will be informed if there's a weather emergency or any type of life-threatening emergency on campus. We inform students, faculty, and staff through our UA Alerts system. UA Alerts can send emergency messages to students through text messages, voice calls, emails to their official UA email account, which ends in crimson.ua.edu, and through the UA Safety Twitter feed and through the UA Safety app. This is a great time to make sure that your student has updated all of their contact information in their MyBama to make sure if they have changed a phone number or 
if anything like that, if they need to update that contact information, this is a great time to have that conversation with your student and make sure your emergency contact information is up to date as well. So Allison's looked at my notes and she knows <laughs> what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Additionally, <laughs> campus indoor and outdoor PA system may be used to, to uh, notify students and faculty and staff of an emergency. All emergency information will be broadcast on 92.5 FM, which is our UA information radio station. It'll be posted on digital signage in our academic buildings, as well as in all of our residence halls. It'll pop up on desktop phone and computers across campus. This includes computers in computer labs and computers in our libraries. It'll be displayed on the UA homepage. Uh, if it's a weather emergency, uh, local television and radio stations will use the emergency alert system. And all of you know what that is. It's the, the beeping sound that, and, uh, you know, it stops the broadcast. It'll be posted on our Crimson Ride bus marquees as they drive around campus. If, it, if needed, our university police can drive around campus with their sirens and public address systems uh, in their cars activated. And then if we have a tornado warning, the Tuscaloosa County EMA siren, the outdoor warning siren, is located on top of Gorgas Library. And there's no way that you can miss it yes, when the I siren goes off. That. <laughs> so here's what you can do. Tip number four, as Allison's already said, <laughs> make sure your child updates their contact information in MyBama. Even if their information has not changed, it is a great idea for them to log in to MyBama once a semester and to check their information. UA tests the UA alert system on the first Wednesday of each month at 11.55 a.m. unless inclement weather is expected on that day. Your student should get a UA alert on the first Wednesday of each month at 11.55. So you may wanna mark that on your calendar and ask your student, hey, did you get today's test of UA alerts? And if they say no, tell them to go to MyBama and to update their contact information. They can find specific directions at ready.ua.edu slash UA alerts. So since we are at the beginning of a brand new month, depending on when you're tuning in to us, this is a great week for you to test that out with your student because we should have one of those emergency alert system checks coming up very soon this Wednesday. Well, we should have it coming up very soon this yeah. Wednesday. I will tell everyone now, and we are recording this prior to the first Wednesday in the month of March. Mm -hmm. uh, the National Weather Service is now forecasting the possibility of some storms okay. on Wednesday. So that test may have to be postponed. Uh, we usually try to postpone to the the next week, the next week. Um, if we have a month like we did in February, yes. where we postponed the test three times, <laughs> then we finally decide to forgo the test for that month <laughs> and we just have to move on. Uh, but it really, it's, we don't want to do it when there's inclement weather or uh, really when there's a lot of rain or, or possible storms in the area because we don't want to uh, cause any panic or uh, make somebody feel uncomfortable when there's no need for that. So that's the reason we don't test on inclement weather days. I will also say that those sirens are wonderful and we absolutely love them. And I don't know if I'm stealing you know, your good. notes again, Shane. Uh, students should not solely depend on sirens. You hear this a lot from our friends in meteorology that sirens are not foolproof. Those can have errors and issues and so that should not be your students only source of information they should be checking it, their ua alerts they should be tuned in to social media the ua safety app make sure that they have multiple ways of receiving weather information don't just rely on those sirens although they are a great great resource great they're a great resource and and like you say uh you know many most of our buildings are built of concrete and steel and and bricks and uh, a lot of our students live on the north side of campus away from the library. They may not hear the siren inside their room in their residence hall. So they can't rely on that. So outdoor warning sirens are for those people who are outdoors. Yes. So if you hear one while you're outdoors, hey, you need to get indoors quickly, but don't rely on them. Again, have multiple ways to receive 
weather watches and weather warnings. Well, I know you parents want to know that information too when an emergency happens on campus. How can you receive the same UA alerts that your students receive? Well, two great ways. Number one, get the UA safety app. Every UA alert that we send posts directly to that app. And you can set that up on your mobile phone to get a notification when an alert goes to that app. So do that. Number two, make sure you're following at UA underscore safety on Twitter. UA alerts are also posted on Twitter. Plus we have some gr other great safety messages that are posted there when we're not in an emergency. So I encourage you to be following at UA underscore safety on Twitter. Yes, I will definitely attest to that. My mom loves the UA safety app. Uh, she absolutely tunes into that and I can say, hi mom, I hope that you enjoy my shameless plug for you. She loves the UA safety app because it makes her still feel connected. Even though I'm no longer a student here, she does still care about what's going on on campus and my safety as well. I want to show you some, uh, some features of our UA safety app. It was just updated in 2019. So take a, just a second and watch this video. Experience UA safety at your fingertips. The UA Safety app has been updated to provide you with an even better user experience. In addition to UA alerts, you'll receive weather alerts, including maps showing affected areas, a seven-day weather forecast for the campus, and the ability to manage the alerts you want to receive. The new Explore section makes it easier to find buildings on campus, and the built-in GPS will help you to get to your destination faster. You can see the UA Safety Twitter feed and even listen to 92.5 FM UA Info Radio. Update or download the UA Safety app on Android and iOS devices today. So again, I really encourage all of our parents to get the UA Safety app. You're gonna get UA alerts when one is sent. You can get weather notifications for things, the weather that's happening in Tuscaloosa County. Um, you can turn those notifications on and off. So for example, we've, you know, the last uh, month, February for us was a very wet month. Yes. And we've experienced some flash flooding here in Tuscaloosa County. And I believe uh, our river may still be at flood stage. Um, and you'll get those flood warnings, but you can go in the app and you can say, I don't wanna know about flooding. Uh, you can turn that off. Uh, you can turn off, you know, winter weather because we don't get a lot of winter weather. You know, we're not gonna have a blizzard here in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you might wanna turn, you know, the, the blizzard warning off, but you can choose uh, which, uh, the warnings and the notifications that you want to get. So uh, just go to the App Store. If you're on an Apple device, go to Google Play. If you're on Android, just do a search for UA Safety. Download it. It's free. Uh, get it in your phone and, and begin using it. I will say I think one of my favorite features of that is that I can turn the sound off for my UA Safety app because I know on campus I'm going to receive UA alerts. And so if some of our family members want to turn that sound off to their UA safety notification, you can still get a banner or a badge on your phone. So you're still going to get the notification, but it won't cause your phone. What I love is that when it shows, uh, if, if, you live, if you live in Tuscaloosa uh, and you have the, uh, the GPS mm -hmm. turned on, the location yes. turned on on your phone, when a polygon pops up for Tuscaloosa County, it shows you where you are in a little dot, and you can see whether or not you're in that warning polygon. If you know you're in the warning polygon, that means get to a safe place right now. But if you're outside of that polygon, you can say, no, I, I'm, a, I'm okay. I'm gonna keep watching the weather, but I don't need to react right now. So parents, here's tip number five. Make sure you and your child have downloaded the UA Safety app for your mobile devices. And you can get more information at ready.ua.edu slash safety dash app. Well, the best thing your student can do is to be prepared. And the university provides some great resources for them to do that. And you can find those at ready.ua.edu slash resources. Now those resources include campus maps, 
our Safer Living Guide, which is produced by our police department and has some great information about personal safety and property safety. Uh, there's also a, a link to a two-page flyer called What to Do in an Emergency. And this is something that your students can print out and post up in their residence hall. And it's just some great information. Uh, you know, maybe an emergency, if your mind just stops working, this is something they can quickly look at and say, oh, this is what I need to do. So I encourage them to go and find that and to print it out. There's also a personal emergency plan there. And again, I encourage them or you to go find that, uh, print it out. It has some information like uh, your full name, your emergency contact list, uh, medications that you might need in an emergency, and other things like that. So think about those things and go and print out that personal emergency plan. And then you'll also find an emergency supply list. And we encourage every student to have an emergency supply kit. We hope that they never use it. We hope, mom and dad, that this is something that you pack and that you send to them and that they put under their bed or they put in their closet in their residence hall or in their apartment, wherever they may live, and that they never touch. But in an emergency, they might need it and they need to be prepared. So I encourage you to go look at that emergency supply list that is on ready.ua.edu slash resources and think about how you could help your student get an emergency supply kit. Now here's my question. Big Al is ready. Are you? So we're excited that Big Al is ready. He's got his emergency supply kit in case we have an emergency on campus. Every student needs to be like Big Al. So parents, here's my next tip. Explore all of the resources that are available at ready.ua.edu slash resources. If your student experiences an emergency while on campus, whether it's a medical emergency, or they need police assistance, or if they ever feel unsafe, they should call 911. Calling 911 from their cell phone while they're on campus will take them to the Tuscaloosa County 911 Dispatch Center, and from there, they will be uh, sent to the appropriate agency. So if they live on campus, that would be university police. If they live off campus in one of our apartments uh, that are near campus or maybe even further out in Tuscaloosa, they might be sent to Tuscaloosa police. But they should never hesitate to call 911 if it's an emergency. They can also reach UAPD 24 hours a day by calling 205-348 5454 or by picking up any one of the blue emergency phones located across campus. You see the map there on your screen and those are all the blue emergency phones that are on our campus. They are literally everywhere. So if a student is on campus and they need to reach 911 or reach university police, all they got to do is grab one of those phones and it immediately calls university police. Your students can also dial 911, UAPD, Tuscaloosa Police, Northport Police, Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, Tuscaloosa Fire and Rescue, and other first responders directly from the UA Safety app. It's one touch of a button and they can call any first responder that they might need. So another reason that they should have 
the UA Safety app. If you'd like more information about emergency pre preparedness on our campus or UA's Office of Emergency Management, you can find that at ready.ua.edu. You can also follow them on Twitter at UA underscore safety and all their information is on the UA Safety app. I encourage you to download it today. And if you have any questions about anything that I've said during this webinar, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. That's my email. And I'd be happy to talk with you and to help clarify anything or to help you feel better about your student being a student here at the University of Alabama. Allison? Wow, Shane, even I learned some new information about the UA Safety app today. So I can't imagine how helpful this was for our parents and family members who are either just learning about the UA Safety app for the first time, which we hope it's not, but we know some of you may not have downloaded that yet, that yet, but we definitely hope that you do after this webinar. We hope that this has made you feel more prepared about talking with your student about what could happen in an emergency and what they need to do to be prepared for that sort of situation to happen. So I can say that the university has done a tremendous job. I was here in 2011. I was a freshman here in college, so I'm dating myself a little bit. Uh, but I can only say such good things about the UA Safety app that I wish we had had it then and it has made my mom feel so much better in the time since then and we are just so thankful not only as a staff member here on campus but just a general Tuscaloosa resident for the university and all that they do to help prepare our students for emergencies and everything that they do in case an emergency does happen. So thank you so much Shane for sharing all this wonderful information. Uh, parents and family members, if you do have any questions for Shane, please feel free to reach out. If you have general questions about this webinar, you can always reach out to our office, either parents at ua.edu, or you can give us a call at 205-348-8330. And we hope you have enjoyed this. And as always, roll tide. <laughs>